By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing a game of old school cube. Now for the ones that don't know what a cube is, a cube is basically a collection of cards. And usually it's full of like those cards you really want to play. Like you can see Hell's Caretaker there on top of one of the piles. But that, you know, when you start playing with it, they're just not as good. They don't make the cut. And a cube is one of those gives you the possibility to play with those cards. There you saw Siphon Soul, another one of those very flavorful cards. The nice thing about Cube as well is that you can recreate a limited environment. So you only have the cards in the Cube to your disposal. So how this works is we're going to mix all these cards together. You can see a shuffle right now. There's also Fallen Empire in here. You can see that Ring of Renewal. Look at that, a volcanic eruption. When do you ever play with a volcanic eruption? And we're going to mix all these cards together. That's actually what we're doing right now. I'm going to put it in a serious fast forward mode in a moment. Um, and we're going to mix them all together. And then we're going to make piles of 15. And each player is going to make five piles of 15. Now each pile represents a booster pack. So that means that we have a total of 15 booster packs and we're going to draft with those booster packs. So what I mean by drafting is for the ones that don't know, you're just going to take a booster pack of 15, you're going to pick one card and then you're going to pass the other 14 cards to the player next to you. And you're going to do that the whole until all the cards are chosen. Now, there is an interesting thing here because we're also going to play with Elder Dragons as our commanders. So you can see five Elder Dragons there in the corner. This is Frank's cube, by the way. He's sitting at the head of the table. So those five Elder Dragons, we're going to randomly choose an Elder Dragon. And then when we know our Elder Dragon, we don't show it to each other but we are only allowed to pick the Elder Dragon um, to, or to pick cards with the color that resemble our Elder Dragon. So for example, if I have an Elder Dragon that has the colors red, uh, white and green, it means that I cannot draft any cards that are black or blue. The nice thing of this is that you cannot hate draft so that all the cards kind of stay in there. It's really, um, I believe that's also Frank's idea of this cube is really to create um, interesting board states to create a lot of dynamic in the games so there probably will be a lot of creatures on the table there will be some really funky synergies happening so we'll just have to see if you're curious by the way about the list of frank's cube you can tr check the uh, description below and there you can find the link to his um to his list of cards in his cube. So let's now take a look at the moment where we actually go and pick our elder dragons Okay, so we're now at the point where we're going to pick our Elder Dragon. So we have the five boosters in front of us, so 15 cards each, and we're now going to draw our Elder Dragons. Let's take a look here. I've got Palladia Morse, so that's white, green, and red. Let's see, Frank has the Arcadus Sabbath, so that's white, green, and blue. And there we go for Gideon, player number three, and he is the... Asmadi, so that's black, red, and green. So I believe Gideon is the only one with black, and Frank is the only one with blue. So that means that the blue power will probably go to uh, go to Frank. But not all cards are included in um, in this draft because we've made piles of fifteen and five boosters each. So there are actually a lot of cards that are not included in this draft, making it even more random to what you're actually going to pick. Now, I'm just going to skip a little bit because right now we're just drafting. We're taking our picks out. Remember, you cannot hate draft, so I cannot take out any blue or black cards because they're not in the color of my commander. Uh, and I'm not going to go to the point where we're actually creating our decks. So here you can see us actually creating the decks. And this is maybe the most difficult part of cube because you've chosen all these cards and now you've got to cut them down to 60. I kind of cheated. I went for 62 in the end, I believe, or 64. Um, and you can see, for instance, Gideon here on the right, he has sorted uh, his creatures according to casting costs. And now he's kind of selecting, okay, what do I want to keep? What am I going to take out? And you can already see some pretty flavorful cards in there. Um, I see, for instance, the Rock of Courageous. Ah, what a beautiful card. And also, I think it's the Toravauki there on the right. It's a legendary creature. We see a Lord of the Pit. So there's just a lot of really flavorful, cool cards there. Um, I can tell you a little bit about my tactic because one of the cards that caught my eye with the Hazazon of Tamar 
and that's a legend and you put it into play and then during your next upkeep you get sand warrior tokens equal to the amount of lands now when you're playing these very long games it means that maybe i can end up with like 10 or 11 sand warrior tokens now i also have a card called johan it's also a legend and it's going to give all my creatures vigilance so i'm hoping to use johan and my tokens to create a kind of a vigilant army I also, so then I went looking for other cards that could create tokens. I also have an Ecation Town that creates four 1-1 tokens. I also have a Midnight Soil. That's a card from Fallen Empires. And I can pay one to remove two creatures from any graveyard. So I can take one from a graveyard of my, my opponent on the left. I can take one from my own graveyard. And then what I get back in return is a 1-1 green creature. So I just want to make a lot of creatures and play a lot of creatures and kind of use Johan to attack with all those creatures, but because I don't have to tap them, I can go all out without really having to face the consequence of getting killed myself, because I will still have enough blockers. Um, so basically, in a nutshell, that's my tactic with a lot of crazy cards in between. I also have two really good board wipes. I have Wrath of God, and I also have a balance in my deck. So if things go really, really rough for me, I have two pretty good comeback cards. So we're playing with decks of 60, or in my case, 62, or was it 64? I actually forgot. Um, so we're not playing with um, with 100 cards like you see in regular Commander. So I guess you could name this Brawl. Um, and we're also starting with 30 lives, because what you kind of want to have, you want to have this big game. You don't want it to end very quickly. And also these decks tend to be pretty slow. So it's going to be a slow game. Um, talking about the game, let's go to the actual match. Okay, and here we go. So we all have 30 lives to start with. We've got our beers. We're ready. We've got some nachos. Ooh, look at my hand there. A Sitinal Druid. So that's a 2-2 creature from the Antiquities. And that's, I think, very interesting because it gives a plus one, plus one counter every time an artifact comes into play. Ooh, and there's an Ecation Store from Fallen Empire here. The way this land works is every time it stays tapped, you get to put a counter on it. And then when you choose to untap it, you can tap it again and it gives you x amounts of mana equal to the counters so there you can see me place the first counter in the meanwhile we see that frank has played um a scavenger folk so that's a one one creature that can destroy an artifact and we see that gideon has a pretty good start there actually with that soul ring felwer stone and a maze of if to protect himself and there's first blood there that scavenger folk is hitting me i'm on 29 there's a bayou and doesn't have, oh, he actually does have the mana to play out um, the Gargoyle, but chooses not to. So I'm now playing my Sitinal Druid. Unfortunately for me, Gideon has already played his two artifacts. What's Frank going to do? Tapping for three. Oh, there's the Avenger. And the Avenger actually gets a plus one, plus one for each artifact in play. So in this case, it's a three, three, because I believe it's a one, one by itself. And two artifacts in play, so there's a 3-3 three, three creature. And let's see, there's a Hammerheim there by Gideon. And now he's playing the Gargoyle. Maybe he's not aware that he can actually make red mana with that Felwer Stone, and that's why he didn't make... Um, he didn't play his Gargoyle earlier. Playing a Mountaineer tapping. There is a Kurt Ape, a 2-3 creature. So we're seeing quite a lot of creatures on the board here. But Gideon is the only one with a flyer and that Maze of If to protect him. So it's looking pretty good. Has that Soul Exchange in hand. Four mana tap, a bottle of Suleiman. Or Suleiman, I have no idea how to pronounce that. And this is an artifact from the Arabian Nights. This is the revised reprint. You can actually pay one and flip it. And if you win the flip, you get a 5-5 Jinn. But if you lose it, you have to take 5 damage. There's a tap of 5. And there's a Fallen Angel. A 3-3 three, three creature with flying. Which is quite strange because the wings are clipped. And when you sacrifice a creature, you give it. You can give it 2-2. Two, two. And as you can see there, my Ecation Store already has 4 counters on it. Unfortunately for me, I do not have any direct damage. I believe... I mean no Fireballs or Disintegrates. I believe they're one of each in this draft pool and Gideon took them out also having red in his commander color 
And I'm actually passing turn. I'm not playing out anything. Ooh, and now Frank is rolling the dice to see if he gets a 5-5 gin. So he says odds are even. He chose odds, and there was a 2, so that's an even number. So that means he got 5 damage, going to 23. And look at that. He's playing an IO pill. And that's a card from Fallen Empire, and you can sack it to deal 2 damage to any target. So it's quite powerful. And my Citadel Druid is now getting another counter because that artifact came into play. So it's now a 3-3 creature. It's really nice that those, those effects that just keep ticking up. And curious to see what's going to happen now. Uh, there's that Torvalki in the hand of Gideon. And he's actually attacking me here for 5, so that means I'm going down to 24. And he's playing his Torvalki. This is a card from Legends. And you can tap it to do 2 damage to target blocking or attacking creature, I believe. So that can be quite powerful. And I'm actually untapping my Ecasian store, so maybe I have a plan here. Playing a Mountain. Attacking both, dealing 2 damage to Gideon. He's unable to use his Torvalki because of Summoning Sickness. I wonder what I'm going to do next. And taking 3 white off and 1, and there's a Wrath of God, so I'm blowing up the table pretty early in the game. And I remember playing this card and thinking, hmm, I'm probably playing it too soon. I cannot play my commander yet because I don't have my second green. So maybe that's the reason that I first want to blow everything up and then later come in with my commander. We'll have to see. Time will tell. Passing turn. Of course, I don't know that Gideon has that animate dead and a soul exchange in hand. So he doesn't really mind having some creatures in the graveyard. And look at that, Frank is only playing a Mox passing turn. And there's a regrowth. And he's kind of doubting what to take. Looks like he's taken the Fallen Angel. Interesting, because he could have played the anime dead on the Fallen Angel. Or is he going for the Gargoyle? Because the Gargoyle he can play straight away. He's going to keep it in hand, passing turn. Or not. No, he's also playing his anime dead, so he's doing a double play here. And there we have the Wauki coming back into play. He's got a minus one, minus zero counter. Ecation Town going, or um, Ecation Store going to two counters again. And there I found my forest, but now I don't have enough mana anymore. I kind of feel like I misplayed that Wrath of God. Tapping six, playing my Ecasian Town, so that means I'm getting a lot of counters. Four in total. And it looks like I'm just passing turns, so next turn I can play my Elder Dragon. I have enough mana. What about my competition? Let's see, Frank only needs one more mana to play his Elder Dragon. Ooh, and there's a Witch Hunter. Witch Hunter is a card from the dark. And you can tap it to deal one damage to another player. And you can also uh, pay, I believe, two white and two to bounce a creature. So you can return a creature to somebody's hand. So in my case, he can actually use his Witch Hunter to kill my tokens. That's pretty bad news for me. And there's the Fallen Angel coming back there. Gideon playing it out. And I'm not untapping my Ecation store. Interesting. So maybe I have another better play to make. And there's Johan. So a card I discussed um, prior to this matchup in the introduction. And Johan is a card that gives all my creatures vigilance. So I actually now kind of have that thing going on where I can attack 
but for some reason I don't. This is interesting. I'm probably don't want to attack Frank here, hoping that he's not going to bounce my tokens. And there is, um, oh, this is a card from Antiquities. And every time you activate an artifact, the controller gains one life. So in this case, Frank gains one life. And I, I forgot the name of this card, actually. It's it's pretty good. You, you see it in, in sideboards in old school, because when you use your mocks, I believe, you also get a life if your opponent uses it. So that means that Frank can get some life back. And we see actually that Gideon is on 29. I'm on 24. Frank is on 23. Attack here with the Fallen Angel. I'm on 21. It's going to be interesting to see what I'm going to do. And of course, I also have the Order of Light Burn. They have protection from black and there is the first elder dragon in the game and it's my elder dragon 7-7 seven, seven, flying trample boom shakalaka laka on the battlefield has summoning sickness still what am i gonna do thinking if i'm gonna attack it i'm actually choosing to attack gideon here with my entire army except for my johan i shouldn't make that mistake because if i use johan they're not they don't have vigilance anymore we see that maze of if and let's see what's going to happen. Playing a Bloodlust over one of my tokens to kill the Wauki. But of course he blocks and taps. That means that he takes two of my Ecation Town folk with him. So I have two tokens left. And is he going to bounce? He's actually going to ping or not. He chooses to ping. So one damage to Gideon chooses not to bounce. And I guess the table is kind of seeing Gideon as a, as a threat because of his good defenses, although he only has one creature now. And I think it's it's still pretty equal here. Of course, I have that Elder Dragon. Yeah, give me some chips. I've got the Elder Dragon. And I think that's the biggest threat on the table, but that Witch Hunter is, is really strong in this matchup. There is a tap, and there we see the Fallen Angel coming back. Going to two here, and I just love, I just want to thank uh, Gideon for playing Howling Mine and putting it in his deck. I mean, Howling Mine is really a very great, great card in, in multiplayer. It's just a lot of fun. You know when you're playing old school one-on-one -on -one and somebody puts a Howling Mine on the battlefield, you probably know, okay, there's some kind of mean idea behind this Howling Mine. But when you're playing cube, it's just fun. A Howling Mine is a good thing. Attacking here. And probably we will see a bounce of my Elder Dragon. Taking it into my hand. And dealing some damage to Frank here, going to 20. And am I pumping it? No, I'm not pumping it. Okay, I'm playing out a clergy, a 1-1 one, one creature. That has regenerate unless my opponent plays, pays a one colorless mana. And there's the night soil that I talked about in the introduction as well. So... I'm, I can start using the Night Soil to get rid of creatures here in both graveyards. And there are quite a lot of creatures because of the Wrath of God and all the other crazy combat that has happened so far. And there is a Mesa Pegasus. 1-1 one, one Flying Banding from White. Two cards here for Gideon. Do I see a Lord of the Pit there? That's very interesting. What is he going to do with that Lord of the Pit? I mean, it is huge. You see Frank, you see Frank getting a card there, by the way, because he just realized he forgot to draw one from his Howling Mine. So he said, you know, go ahead there, draw, draw your card. And let's see, what is he going to do?
Tapping, 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 counting here. Putting a Lord of the Pit in the game. Attacking here, so dealing damage. This is interesting, by the way. What is he doing? Playing the Lord of the Pit, then... Oh, he's sacking the Lord of the Pit to the Fallen Angel. So it's, it's actually a super expensive way to pump a creature. So it's kind of a giant growth, but then not as good and very expensive. Okay, <laughs> that's pretty cool. And I'm also doing some night soil work here. So you see me getting two 1-1 one, one green creatures doing that at the end step of Gideon here. Playing a plateau and recasting my Elder Dragon. Basically what I'm trying to do is, is, is just put so many threats on the table that, you know, Frank can only bounce one of the threats. So you'll have to make a choice. And there we see a Mishra's War Machine coming on the table. And I'm talking about that toy, of course. Let's see, Frank's turns untapping. And drawing there for turn. I think he I think he forgot to activate his witch hunter again, and that's why he's not putting that the, the Timmy Talks pin on the witch hunter, just to, to remember. There's the Savannah Alliance. Tapping two more. That's interesting. Oh, that's a River Merfolk. It took me a moment to recognize that card. Now River Merfolk can be quite powerful in this matchup because it has Mountain Walk, but of course Gideon has the Hammerheim and you can tap Hammerheim to take away a land walk ability. So if he attacks Gideon with that, that means he can just use his Hammerheim. So probably that River Merfolk is going to mean trouble for me and not for my opponent. And it's a little bit unclear like what's happening. Okay, he's attacking Frank. Frank is bouncing the Fallen Angel with the Witch Hunter, and then Gideon's recasting it. Now it's my turn, I'm untapping. It's kind of difficult to, to, to follow what's happening in the game. But I guess I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna cast a Falling Star here. This is going to be interesting. So what creatures am I going to pick? With Falling Star, I can put the cards any way I want to, so I can put the creatures any way I want to. And just like with a Chaos Orb, I have to hold it above from one feet, and then it has to flip completely. And now I'm actually thinking, I'm just collecting all the creatures of my opponents. So you can put them any way you want to, as long as they don't overlap each other. So I'm definitely going for the River Merfolk there and the Witch Hunter. I think those are my two most important targets. And I'm just deciding now that I also want to hit the flyer. Oh, it's not good. This is not good. Oh, man. So that is definitely bad sauce here for me. Um, I, re I really, I, I just was too greedy. I was hoping to hit at least four creatures. I do have a two for one now with Falling Star, but... My two biggest problems, the River Merfolk because of Mountain Walk and the Witch Hunter that's really like controlling the game with the pinging effect, the bouncing effect, I should say. Um, you know, th those two I haven't hit. So it was actually a pretty bad flip. So that's pretty painful. This was my chance to kind of get control back in this game. Because can you imagine Frank without his Witch Hunter? And also interesting to see is that I've had my commander out for a very long time, but I'm not really able to do that much with it. Attacking now, because the Witch Hunter is tapped, so I'll probably be able to deal 7 damage. And dealing a little bit of damage here to Gideon as well, attacking him also. So we see Frank going down to 15. Gideon on 19 and I'm on 16 it seems. Let's see. We do see some nice uh, images by the way of, uh, of Gideon's kids. We're at, we're at his house. So that's pretty funny. But dad is playing magic so really really busy.
and I'm deciding to make some more uh, tokens with my night soil. So my tactic so far is it actually is going pretty much the way that I, I want it to. But I feel like I'm, I'm not making the right choices. And that's always difficult when you've got multiple opponents. And are we going to see the Elder Dragon here of Frank being cast? I think we are. There it is. Boom! There is the Elder Dragon. The Arcadis Sabbath. And the interesting thing here is that it gives all the untapped creatures plus zero plus two. And that's, of course, interesting. It also has that ability to pump himself, plus zero, plus one. So it's a very good defensive creature. And I think that makes it one of the better Elder Dragons here of this table. Because mine is just 7-7 seven, seven, Trample. They all have Flying. And I think Gideon has some abilities as well. But he's the only one who hasn't played his Elder Dragon yet. And nice thing here to see is because you don't have a lot of removal to your disposal, these Elder Dragons actually stick around quite a while. And there I'm using my Night Soil again. So I've got quite a lot of tokens here. And can I find my Hasazon of Tamar? Because then I can make Sand Warrior tokens. Drawing two for turn. And what can I do? You saw a little cut there in the video, by the way. Because the game got delayed a little bit, so I decided to take that out of the coverage. Um, but we're still in the same situation. I'm not just deciding with what I'm going to do. In the meanwhile, we're also enjoying some nice local beers from the Amsterdam Bre Brewery Het Ei. There I play Hazazan of Tamar. Yes, yes. This means if this can stay alive, if I can keep it until next upkeep, I get a lot of Sand Warrior tokens. But I have also a really, really big problem, and that is again that Witch Hunter. Because what Frank can do is he can bounce my Hazazon, and as soon as the Hazazon leaves play, all my Sand Warrior tokens are destroyed. So that's a huge problem. So now he's just pinging for one. It's his turn again. So that Witch Hunter is really kind of controlling the game. And he can, of course, use his artifact there to deal, deal two damage to the Royal Assassin. And that's exactly what he's going to do. So he's killing the Royal Assassin, of course, to protect his Witch Hunter. And that really takes me back to the Falling Star play that um, flip where I missed the Witch Hunter. And let's see. Now he's starting to attack with the River Merfolk. Remember, it has Mountain Walk. And he's probably going to attack me with it because of that Hammerheim. So I'm going to 14. I'm actually on the lowest life total, but I have the most creatures and so many threats on the table. And Gideon just playing a land and passing turn, so that's not great. Counting my lands, of course, to decide how many Sand Warrior tokens I get, but I think it's going to be kind of useless because as soon as I attack with them, Frank is going to bounce my Hazazon. So, I guess we're cheering here post-combat. Look at how black Frank's beer is. Unbelievable. Let's see what's going to happen here. Kind of in the tank. I want to attack Frank. I want to deal damage. I think he's, he's the biggest threat for me right now with that Witch Hunter. My problem is... He's got that, he's got that Elder Dragon. And I'm actually deciding to attack uh, Gideon here. Maybe thinking 
if I take out one of the opponents, I can just purely focus focus on on Frank. And it's hard now for Gideon to decide to, because if he uses his maze of if, I guess that's what I'm trying to say here, he doesn't have his maze of if anymore to protect himself from the elder dragon, so then Frank could attack. There's a cockatrice, another threat, and I guess we're going to see an end of turn bounce here by Frank with the witch hunter. That's exactly what's happening. And I'm just waiting for the right moment to hit Frank because he is really a problem for me with that river merfolk. He has an unblockable creature and of course that witch hunter that's kind of like dominating the game. Let's see, it looks like Frank is kind of in a tank here. What is he going to do? Tapping one blue for the mountain walk ability, attacking me going down to 12. I mean, in a way, the Witch Hunter is also holding him hostage because he has to keep mana open to bounce other creatures for his Witch Hunter. Playing another forest here. And they're tapping some... Mana, what's going to happen? Oh, a Preacher. That is nice. Of course, for me, it's not a huge problem because I have a lot of tokens that I can give him. But it's definitely another one of those little creatures that can do a lot of harm. So it's nice to see, like, Witch Hunter and Preacher together here. I believe, you know, Witch Hunter is a little bit underplayed. Could work in some decks. Of course, the two white is always kind of an issue. And there's a soul exchange. Interesting here. Sacking the fallen angel to exchange it with the royal assassin. So there's the 1-1 one, one royal assassin is back again. Interesting to see because now what Frank can do is use the Preacher to get hold of the Royal Assassin. So a very interesting choice. Of course he has Diamond Valley to sack it, so it doesn't really change it that much. It is a difficult position because Frank is not going to use his Preacher on me probably because I can just give him a token. So he's probably going to try to take the Royal and then Gideon will use his Diamond Valley. But maybe he's hoping that Frank will use the Preacher on me. Maybe make some kind of deal. Although we're not very good in deal making, I must say. And what can I do? I actually don't want to kill Gideon at this point. Instead, I'm deciding just to go in here for an all-in attack. And I actually remember this move. And I made, I made one, uh, well, multiple pretty big mistakes. But my biggest mistake here is that I forgot that all the creatures of Frank are getting that plus zero, plus two bonus from his Elder Dragon. So he's actually now going in the tank because he thinks, okay, if he's attacking me, it must mean he has some kind of pump spell. Um, so I really have to think about this. So he's now in the tank, and he shouldn't be, because I simply forgot about the pump of, um, of his Elder Dragon. So all his creatures have plus zero, plus two. So that means my Elder Dragon goes back to the command zone, so I have to pay two more to play it again. And I'm only doing him a little bit of damage and losing a lot of tokens here, so it's a very bad play. It does mean Frank goes to 12, just like me. And I'm just going to instantly replay my Elder Dragon. 
And of course, I have that Cockatrice, which is pretty good defense here. But remember, I'm on 12 and that River Merfolk is unblockable. I can't stop it. And this is nice, a greater realm of preservation, a protection, a circle of protection. And the nice thing is it protects me from black and from red sources. But I do have to pay one white and one. So it can protect me from a fireball that can come out of nowhere. So that's pretty nice. But it's not going to save me from the river Merfolk. And maybe at this point I should use my politics to make some kind of deal. But I don't think we really do that here at this table. We're just, um, you know, drinking and trying to figure out, and I'm trying to figure out how I can get rid of that river Merfolk. And you can really here see the power of these small little creatures. There's a life chisel. And there's some nice synergy here. Life chisel is an artifact from Legends. And it works a little bit like Diamond Valley, but then you can only use it in your upkeep. So in your upkeep, you can sack X creatures. So not just one, but multiple. And you gain life equal to their toughness. Now he has that preacher, so he can steal a creature. Then in his upkeep, sack it to his chisel, and then he can choose a new target. The only thing is that the upkeep comes after the untap phase. So that's kind of the, the problematic part here. And that makes this combo really, really slow because he's now going to steal a creature that he's going to sack to the life chisel. Interesting here to see that Gideon is not using his Diamond Valley. Interesting choice. He's probably doing that because I'm not going to or does he want to use his drain life? He wants to use his drain life maybe on the preacher. And then he's going to get his royal assassin back. So that's probably the reason why he decided not to use his diamond valley on his royal assassin. So let's see what he's going to do. I mean, he's also low on life. He has a lot of swamps there. Well, a lot he has, he has a decent amount, so he probably wants to take out a bigger threat and gain some life. Also has that Dark Ritual in hand. But I, I feel like he has to... He has to take his Royal Assassin back. You're, maybe you're wondering why isn't Gideon playing out his commander. The reason is he doesn't have any forests he need he needs one more forest and then he can play out his commander but he does he cannot find it so he's just very unlucky he's finding a lot of swamps but what to do in this situation what would you do just play a big drain life on something juicy or try to get the royal back and i, I guess this is just the best decision i mean what else what else can he do I mean, it is, it is when you're the only one at the table that cannot cast, you know, your commander. You're actually not doing that bad of a job just by still being alive. Um, and he doesn't have any, or does he? Does he have enough mana to still use his Witch Hunter? And there is an, I believe, oh, what's that creature called again? It's Ecation... Soldier Ecation something. It's a 1-1 one, one that you can give Banning of Fallen Empire and the Hazasan of Tamar. So this is Sand Warrior token card again that got bounced a while ago. And interesting. He's going to bounce the Royal. So he's probably afraid that at some point Gideon will use the Royal to kill the Witch Hunter. And I decided not to attack. That's because of that plus zero, plus two. On the other hand, Frank is only on eight. So I should be able, when I go just on an all-out attack, I have so many creatures. I mean, I should be able to kind of kill him. Paying six here, what's going to happen? No, not paying six. What's happening here? Being two forests and an island. 
playing a Lay Druid. Lay Druid, a creature that can untap lands, tap to untap a land. Very cool to use with, for instance, a Library of Alexandria or a Maze of If. You don't see it often, but it's actually a very cool card. There's that attack, and I'm going to 9. River Merfolk is doing some serious work. I wish I had that Hammerheim that my opponent has. And there, ooh, there's the Asmati. So there's the Elder Dragon. And there's also a Sengir Vampire. So here we see Gideon building his defenses. Of course, for me, with the Greater Realm of Preservation, I'm not worried at all. Look at that, getting 13 Sand Warrior tokens. But that doesn't really mean anything because Frank can just bounce my Hazazon and then my Sand Warrior tokens are toast. There's a Dragon Engine. 1 3 creature from the antiquities. You can pay 2 to give it plus 1 plus 0. And it's kind of still a standstill here. What can I do? Maybe attack with my cockatrice. Am I doing that? I'm not doing that. Passing turn, end of turn. He's bouncing, interesting, he's bouncing my Elder Dragon. So maybe he's preparing an attack. And I think I should have played it a bit more aggressively here, maybe attacking with the Cockatrice. Then again, I would sacrifice my Cockatrice to his Elder Dragon and that would mean that his Elder Dragon just goes back to the command zone. I mean, it's difficult. Look at what Frank's doing here, paying a lot of mana using the Elder Druid as well, or the Lay Druid, I should say. Oh, Volcanic Eruption. Oh, there's a Red Elemental Blast to save my life here, wow. For a Volcanic Eruption, for fear. Oh. Destroy four mountains. Four mountains. Red Elemental hey. Blast. Oh. <laughs> this was the claim to Bobby, man. Oh. Okay. Damn. Woo. I just had to put this in uh, in replay. And the cool thing about volcanic eruption is that it doesn't only destroy the mountains, so it also uh, destroys. It also deals damage equal to the amount of mountains destroyed. So in this case, he wanted to destroy four mountains. So that would mean he will, would also deal four damage to each opponent and four damage to each creature. So with that. He would basically almost wipe us all out. Um, so I had to play this Red Elemental Blast. But I still have that River Merfolk there. That's really a big problem for me. Um, and now I don't have my Red Elemental Blast to take care of that River Merfolk. Because that was my my secret plan, actually. So let's see what, um, what Frank can do now. He's actually he's playing a Time Walk. Wow, one of the only pieces of power actually in this matchup, and I believe the only piece of blue power that was found. He's pinging me. I'm going to eight. He's untapping. He doesn't have enough mana left to give his River Merfolk Mountain Walk in that turn, so he cannot attack again. Now he's taking an extra turn. I'm on eight, and Gideon's on five, and Frank is on 11 still, so he probably doesn't have the resources to take us both out or even to take one of us out. So again, this turn is going to be very important for Frank. The good thing is he was able to untap, so that means he can use his Witch Hunter again. He can attack with his River Merfolk. Maybe he can do something else. There's a Boomerang. What is he Boomeranging? Oh, there goes my Cockatrice. And he's actually attacking me. Remember, his Elder Dragon can get pumped with one white, so plus zero, plus one. Oh, but wait a minute, I don't have my Elder Dragon in play. I only have the Cockatrice to block, so that means I have to take the damage if he's attacking me. Ay ay ay! is there anything that I can do? Tapping three here. Oh, <laughs> playing a reverse damage. 
Oh, that's so cool. So I'm staying alive again. Reverse damage on the Elder Dragon. That means I'm going to 15, gaining life from the damage that the Elder Dragon is doing. But I also have to take the damage, of course, from the River Merfolk. So I'm on 13 now. Passing turn. Looks like Gideon is on 3, if I see that correctly. And let's see what Gideon can do now. He's also almost dead. Playing a Rock of Courageous, beautiful card. And playing a Royal Assassin. So just trying to put more creatures on the board, being able to block everything. Of course, he also has that Diamond Valley. And that can be very important actually for him because that is a life maker as well. And it looks like he wants to attack. He's going to swing in, he's going to attack, but I have my Greater Realm of Preservation. I can use that to prevent the damage. And then he uses his Maze of If to untap his Asmadi. So a little mistake there by Gideon, but that's not a complete surprise because the board is just so full of creatures right now. And if I'm now looking at my own board, look at that, I'm still tapping lands for the upkeep cost for my commander, but my commander's not in play. Oh, and I'm going all out now on Frank. I'm gonna to try to kill Frank here, I'm gonna to try to take him out. Looking at the creatures that he has, knowing now that all his creatures have plus zero, plus two as a bonus. And I'm actually rethinking my strategy now. What can I do? And we're, di we're discussing what's wisdom and I'm saying you're probably going to send back my Hazazon of Tamar and that means that I'm going to lose all the tokens so they're not included in the attack here. On the other hand, he is pretty tapped out. You know, he, he doesn't have his Elder Dragon for support. I'm... I need to do something. Tapping a bunch of mana here, playing my Cockatrice again. It looks like I'm deciding not to attack. It, it is difficult here. Taking back my Cockatrice, what am I doing here? I'm really in the tank. It's, it's difficult, my hand is full with big creatures. We also have that black vise on the table, so you don't want to have more than four cards in hand. Actually playing a Sylvan Library here. And I'm now attacking uh, Gideon with all my Sand Warrior tokens. And I think the idea here is just to... to when I attack Gideon, then Frank's probably not going to use his Witch Hunter. And then at least I have one other player out of the equation and I can focus on just one opponent here. And look at that, he's sacking with his Asmadi, sacking his Asmadi, so going back to the command zone, he is ending on one little measly life. Taking a ton of damage here. Blocking as much as he possibly can, and look at that, I'm playing a Rock Hydra. A 6-6 six, six Rock Hydra. Really cool creature. And it looks like Gideon is as good as dead now because Frank also has a Witch Hunter so he can use the Witch Hunter to ping Gideon out of the game and I wonder if this is a good decision if I'm able to win this game against Frank obviously I have a lot more creatures than he does and I have more life and so at end of turn it is done it is done It looks like Gideon is out of the equation. So he goes to zero here, killed by the Witch Hunter for that final blow. And now it's going to be interesting. And we see a little, uh, <laughs> a little drawing there. That's a gift for Frank. And let's see. It is quite interesting now to see if I can win this game. 
I mean, I've played pretty much all of my trick cards here. My reverse damage is gone. My red elemental blast is gone. It's going to be interesting to see what Frank can still do. And he's attacking. It looks like he's going to attack with his flying creatures. And that's exactly what he does. Yeah, so he's attacking with his Elder Dragon, attacking with his River Merfolk, and attacking with his Sephir Falcon. I have no flyers, so I simply have to take all the damage. Ooh, and he's playing an Amnesia. So many flavor here, so I have to, to discard my entire hand, so my Cockatrice is gone. But I don't really care, because I feel if I just attack with everything, go full force here, maybe I'm able to win this match. I think I'm going to add Johan to the mix as well. Just go in. My opponent only has two blockers remaining. The Witch Hunter and the Lions. And he's probably... He doesn't have mana anymore to actually use his Witch Hunter, I think. So that means he only has three blockers and he cannot use his Witch Hunter. So that would mean that I can actually take this one. Attacking with everything here. Full on. Okay, so I just switched the original recording. Let's see what's gonna happen. Oh no, holy day for the win. I could smell the victory. I really thought that I, uh, that I had Frank there. Oh man, <laughs> what an ending. I'm liking this. I'm liking cube. I'm liking this old school cubing because you're using cards you usually don't use. Um, if you have an old school cube and uh, leave a comment, tell me what you think of this cube. Um, like I said in the introduction, there's also a link below where you can find the list of Frank's cube. And, um, you know, advice is always uh, appreciated. Thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. Um, and let me know what you think of these kind of episodes. They're a little bit different than what you're used to. You know, now we're doing cube. Uh, let me know if you like that and maybe I'll record some more. Um, for now, thank you for watching. If you want to support the channel, you can do so by subscribing, by um, or leaving a comment, by sharing this video on your socials and um, by liking the video. That always helps. And of course, we're also on Patre uh, Patreon, as you're probably aware of. So people are now also supporting the show financially. Uh, at the moment, we have 25 patrons. So um, that's just fantastic because it allows me to get some new equipment and to make some better videos. So thank you to my patrons. Talking about my patrons, let's go to the end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Ich kann das Finger zu Sumba gesehen.